Hidden deep within the rugged Kenyan landscapes, the springs that feed the Iwasu Nyiru River reveal a breathtaking spectacle. Glistening droplets emerge from the earth, forming crystal clear pools that reflect the vibrant hues of the surrounding flora. Kenya adopted the Water Act of 2016, which fully recognized water resources users associations, locally known as RUAS, as formal volunteers to manage water intake points on behalf of the government. The intakes are fed by these springs. Founded in 1998, Ngusishi Rua was among the first to be established as a way of averting looming tribal clashes over water resources. 1993-1994, January, February and March, all the youth used to come here with the rungus, with the michare, so that the downstream cannot access here because we are abstracting the whole springs. Because we believe on those days, it was Meru County, the water belongs to Meru people, so you people from Laikipia, Shaurienu. Ngusishi Rua has automated centralized water intake points on most tributaries within their catchment area, all of which feed into Timau River. From there, water is managed without human interference, ensuring the flow of the tributaries and equity in access to water. Downstream, Briefs, the mineral stream, are abstracting everything. When you go to the mineral stream, they will tell you the upstream are abstracting everything. But here, there is no that story because here, all our intake are at the source. And no other intake is allowed along our river until it meets Timau River. So that is one of the best. Five to six kilometers downstream, more tributaries join in River Timau as it snakes its way through Meru County. Human activities are more intense here as it is outside the Mount Kenya forest protected area. Farming by the river banks is a notable trend. The water volume is not much as is found by the springs and gradually water assumes a murky brown color. Temau is more brown than Nanyuki because it comes, it flows through uh, fields which have been cultivated and therefore it, it uh, erodes the soil and uh, uh, carries the, the, the soil, the sediments down with it. So that it, it has some effect in terms of uh, the water quality because of the siltation and also the, the quantity because it blocks the water as you go down, uh, downstream. That's why you find uh, still get deposited. That's why you find that upstream you can have water, but as you go down, it dries up. Uh, you have pools and pools of water because of the deposits of silt, which uh, kind of impedes it or prevents it from flowing downstream. Alex Duranera, a farmer in Timau, is convinced that farming on riparian land has no effect at all. He actually points an accusing finger at eucalyptus trees as the sole disruption to clean water flow. Several confluences downstream as more tributaries join from Timau River to Nanyuki River and now Isiolo River. The activities are no different. Farming along the river banks intensify here and since rainwater is not as frequent, farmers abstract water from the river. In a five-kilometer stretch, I could count over 15 water pumps, and the rhythm of their buzz peers the silence of the otherwise peaceful upcountry. Some of the farmers openly doing flood irrigation, and notably down the stream, water volumes reduce significantly. Per week, me bigger much more ability. Wednesday. Na Thursday. Ambaye, ni siku ya leo ningefaa kupiga lakini siyo, siyo ni. Sana sana ni vigumu kuhusu hiyo watu kulima. Sababu hiyo ndiyo hali yao ya maisha. Na atuna njia nyingine ya kuambia mtaacha kulima mfanya haya. Lakini vile vile, tumejaribu kuwahimiza. Wakati kama huu, tunawamba sasa matumisi ya maji yawe haba. Kwa wale watu wanalima, wakikisha pumping kwa mtu tumekata haija uruusiwa. Although pia ni irigo haija kubalika kisheria intensify uh, farm management practices and uh, uh, 
let uh, soil and water conservation measures at farmland eh, be uh, enhanced in order to reduce soil erosion. Uh, that is one. And this requires that the people should get more educated to understand how to design, implement, protect and uh, ensure that these structures are sustainable. Right behind Isiolo town is Isiolo river. The situation of the river is dire. Despite having multiple springs along the river, the volumes are still extremely low. And here the impact of the activities upstream can be felt firsthand. Women and the elderly bearing the brunt. About 800 meters from where we spoke to Teresa Ayangan and Rosemary Mpue, the river dries off and all that's left are pods of water. Maria Loboi is making her way to the stream with a jerrycan in hand. The frustrated Maria will now have to fetch water from the pod to quench her thirst and that of her children back home. All household duties will have to be suspended until a time when water will resume flowing. As we speak, her mother is making her way to the river, tired of waiting for water to be brought home for her to take bath. She cannot believe her eyes. Sisi najua kutoka zamani upado watoto kama maji iko kwa laga. Wewe unachota tu. Lakini saa hii Sasa <laughs> lakini kwa vile matumizi ya maji imekuwa mengi na maji pia yamekuwa haba kidogo ndio sababu tuko na maji kidogo na kwa kiasi ambayo maji tuko nayo tumefanya rationing after scouting the river she resorts to washing her feet in one of the water pods she and her daughter both a frustrated lot will either have to move upstream in search of water or wait for another day maji ndio naweka watu hai kama hakuna wewe hakuna Further down the stream along Isiolo River, we find springs gushing water in small volumes. Swimming insects, dragonflies of different species, and these kaleidoscope of butterflies flapping their wings, occupying the wet patch, seem content with what is available. But then reality strikes that something has to be done. Other forms of wildlife need more to survive. 
we have had an acute human wildlife conflict because of competition for resources and specifically water. We have had homesteads where water tanks have been broken. We have had schools where water tanks have been broken. We have individual people who have uh, put their water dams and uh, wildlife go there to drink water, especially the elephants, which take a lot of water. So we have had conflict and we've had to talk to communities to understand and allow uh, wildlife and allow the river to flow so that wildlife is, has access to water. While climate change plays a role in the reduction of water in general, human interference has a role. Judgment stop! Judgment water! Judgment of water! Judgment stop! Judgment of water! Judgment stop! Judgment stop. Some non-governmental organizations have taken it upon themselves to sensitize masses through public barazas. The World Wildlife Fund Kenya is one such organization that has been running the journey of water campaign to sensitize those living along the river lines on the importance of conservation of water sources. These efforts, however, need to be scaled up by the government and other private sectors nationally. It is only through dissemination of information and sensitization of community through such platforms that eventually the restoration of the Iwaso Nero can be achieved. The approaches depend on the ecological zone because there are different characteristics. You know, remember when you are up there, the kind of rains we saw there, they are, very, they are showers, light showers, which uh, have got what we call high propensity to to infiltrate and recharge the groundwater. But as you go towards the marine areas, you have more like uh, uh, storms which have got very high intensities. Huh? And that's where you, they cause what is called hard pans and, uh, and uh, surface sealing and reduces erosion. So there, down there you can have water pans and up there you can have uh, encourage, um, reduce um, uh, erosion. Hakuna aspect here. Kenya na dusa hii, ita, ita, the, what are the positive or the negative effect of my actions today? You are kuna. And you can see it from different levels. So yes, I'm encouraged that there is solutions and people are implementing the solution. Electric in and discourage me. We need a certain level of resource and support. Maybe WWF, Naizo, Rua, Zuinani, they need to na kwa scale higher and bigger so that if you are to down downstream. So how do we ensure that we manage our catchments for the good of not just those who are in the catchment, but even those who are downstream. This is really, really important. And it's good to highlight this because this is a replica of what is going on in the rest of the country. As Kenya navigates its path towards sustainable development, it is imperative to prioritize the preservation of its natural resources. By understanding the impacts of upstream water abstraction on downstream communities, and actively involving them in the decision-making process, a balance can be struck, ensuring a future where the Ewasonyiro River continues to nurture and sustain the lives it touches. In Gandhi's words, the earth, the air, the land, and the water are not an inheritance from our forefathers, but on loan from our children. So we have to hand over to them at least as it was handed over to us. For Voice of Nature, I'm David Kagina.